7.2, Direction Fields and Euler's Method. And in this section, all we need to cover for the AP exam is direction fields, so that's all we're going to be doing. A direction field can give a picture of a differential equation when no solution can be found. For example, suppose we want the graph of the solution of the initial value problem y prime equals x plus y where the initial value y is 0 equals 1. Since y prime gives the slope of the solution curves as the next slide illustrates, so we had y prime equals x plus y, that was the question they asked us, and so all we're doing is we're plotting the derivative curve. So basically, we know that the slope at any point x1, y1 is x1 plus y1. So depending on where we are in the graph, our derivative changes. And all we're doing is we're thinking, what does the tangent line look like there? So what I do is I know in this sum um, example that a point on my curve was 0, 1, because they told me that. It goes through the point 0, 1. At 0, 1, what is the slope? Well, the slope y prime equals x plus y. And so x is 0, y is 1, and so the slope should be 1. So all we do is we draw a little line there that represents what the tangent line looks like at that point. So we say that the slope at the point 0, 1 is 0 plus 1, or 1. The solution curve near the point 0, 1 looks like a short segment with a slope of 1. In the same way, we can draw short line segments at a number of points, x, y, with slope x plus y, resulting in a direction field. And this is what allows us to visualize the solution curve. So what do I mean by that? Well, we knew that it should go through this point, and we said that the slope there was 1. And to draw a slope of 1, you just draw a 45-degree line. So that's an easy one. And then, let's say here, this is the point 1 half 0. And so the slope would just be 1 half. So it is half as steep as a 45-degree line. And then at the point 1 0, the slope is going to be 1. And then the slope at the point 2, 0 is going to be 2, so it's just steeper. So we just draw little approximations here. We know at the point 2, 0 and at the point 0, 2, the slope should look the same because the slope is 2 at both points. And that's just how you draw it. You'll see here at the point 0, negative 1, you have a slope of negative 1. And then to draw our actual solution curve, all we do and I'm going to just draw it on this one, is we know it goes through this point, because they told us this was a point, and we kind of pick up what you see going on. So you just kind of trace out the little lines. You see an asymptote kind of happening right there. Note, when you're doing this, this graph is dependent on both x and y values. And I'll talk a lot more about the importance of that as we go on and as we do the homework. But this graph is dependent on both the x and the y values because the derivative has both x's and y's in it. In general, suppose we have a first order differential equation of the form y prime equals f of x, y. Here f of x, y is an expression in both x and y. The differential equation says that the slope of a solution curve at the point x, y on the curve is f of x, y, which is what we just did. If we draw segments with a slope f of x, y at several points x, y, we get a direction field. Sketch the direction field for the differential equation y prime equals x squared plus y squared minus 1, and then use the field to sketch the solution curve that passes through the origin. So we know that the point that we're going through in this example is 0, 0. Again, we see that our derivative is dependent on both x and y in this example. Before drawing these, I tend to like to see where the derivative equals 0, because that's a very easy little tangent line to draw in. So I'm just going to look, when does y prime equal 0? That's when x squared plus y squared minus 1 equals 0. 
in other words, where y squared equals, okay, uh, put everything on the other side, 1 minus x squared. You know what? This isn't a really good one to say, all right, let me just draw in whenever y squared equals 1 minus x squared, let me make the tangent line equal 0. This isn't a really good one. And again, I'm going to show you why I do this as we go on with examples and in homework, because a lot of these on the AP exam are matching, and so that's why I do that a lot. Now, I don't really have any better way except to say, all right, let's pick some x and y values, and let's find the derivative. So let's just pick. I'm just randomly picking. Let's do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, um, with all these y's, 0. Just randomly picking some points. It's like I'm picking points and plotting them just like you did when you were learning how to uh, graph lines. We have x squared plus y squared minus 1. Negative 2 squared 4 plus 0 minus 1 is 3, 1, plus 0 minus 1 is 0, 0 plus 0 minus 1 is negative 1, 1 plus 0 minus 1 is 0, and then 4 plus 0 minus 1 is 3. Um, let's just do the same thing. I'm um, just going to do it with some y's. And so, of course, I'm going to get the same thing here as I did there because I have x squared plus y squared minus 1. And to really do this, you need to pick a lot more points. But we can see that we had, let's see, at negative 2, 0, we had a slope of 3. So at negative 2, 0, we had a pretty steep slope. At negative 1, 0, we had a slope of 0. So at negative 1, 0, our slope was 0. At 0, 0, our slope was negative 1. So that's a 45 degree line with a negative slope. At 1, 0, our slope was 0. And then at 2, 0, our slope was 3. So slope is 0. And then slope is 3. Slope was 3. Our slope was 3. And then we did the y's. We did the same 3, 0, negative 1, 0, 3. So we had 3, 0, negative 1, 0, 3. And then they just picked a lot more points. Um, for example, at 1, 1, we would have had 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2, minus 1 is 1. So again, that's a 45 degree line. And then, remember, it said that we went through the origin. And so we need to pick it up through the point 0, 0. And then you just kind of trace the curve out. So it looks something about like that. Here's just a little application. This one looks intimidating because it has a whole lot of words, but all we really need to pay attention to is the equation that they give us. The figure shows a simple electric circuit with an electromotive force battery or generator that produces at time t a voltage e of t volts and a current i of t amperes. The circuit also contains a resistor with a resistance of R ohms and an inductor with an inductance of L. Ohm's law gives us the drop in voltage due to the resistor as Ri. The voltage drop due to the inductor is dl dt. And then we have this equation. Okay, and this is really all we need. A first order differential equation that models the current I at time t. Suppose that in the circuit of figure 9, the resistance is 12 ohms, the inductance is 4, a battery gives a constant voltage of 60, draw a corresponding direction field. So all we have to do here is we know that R equals 12, L equals 4. And then we had our equation L di dt equals, sorry, plus 
R I equals E T. Our L was four. Our R was twelve. So let's just solve for di dt. So we have four. Divide by four. Okay, so now we can use that to go ahead and draw the direction field. Now notice in this one that di dt only is dependent on i. It's not dependent on t. And so that's going to make our drawing so much easier. So remember, we had di dt equals 15 minus 3i. So the first thing that we noted was di dt dependent only on i. Now, look at what I wrote here. di dt is dependent only on i, therefore the line segments along horizontal lines are parallel. This is key. What do I mean by that? I mean that since it only depends on i, and i is on my y-axis because I had t, i, because the derivative only depends on i, only when I change my i value does my derivative change. It is not dependent on x. So, for example, if I let i be 0, I know my derivative is 15 minus 0, or 15. A very, very steep line. It doesn't matter what my t is. My slope is 15 along this whole horizontal row. When my i is 4, I have 15 minus 3 times 4, 15 minus 12, which is 3. So that's a pretty steep slope. It's definitely steeper than 45 degree line, which would be like there. So it's just a little bit steeper. And so across that whole horizontal line, I should be drawing parallel And then, as I said, when does di dt equal zero? That's the question I like to first ask myself usually. When i equals five. And so when i equals five, I have horizontal tangent lines. I can only go straight across because the derivative only depends on i. Okay, so what is the limiting value of the current? So basically, what is the limit as I go off to infinity? Well, as I go off to infinity, all these curves are going to i equals 5. I have a horizontal tangent there. Identify any equilibrium solutions. Remember that is just when the derivative is limiting off. So that would just be the same answer to B and C. They're asking the same thing. If the switch is closed when t equals 0, so the current starts with, here's our initial condition, use the direction field to sketch a solution curve. So we need to go through 0, 0, and that pink line would just pick up our solution curve there. Here you'll also see that they've drawn two more, one with an initial position at t equals 1 and another. And this neat shift only occurs because the derivative is only dependent on i. Otherwise, it wouldn't just shift over like this.
Notice from figure 11 that the line segments along any horizontal line are parallel. And that is because the variable t does not occur on the right-hand side of the equation. In general, a differential equation of the form y prime equals f of y, meaning that the derivative is dependent only on the y value. The independent variable is missing. I didn't say f of x comma y. I just said f of y. It only depends on y. That is called autonomous, and you should know that word. For such an equation, the slopes corresponding to two different points with the same y-coordinates must be equal. In fact, if the y-coordinate is the same, no matter what the x is, they're all those slopes are exactly the same. They're parallel. This means that if we know one solution to any autonomous differential equation, then we can obtain infinitely many others just by shifting the graph of the known solution to the right or the left, which is what we just saw in the last slide. And that's it for this section. We'll be doing a lot more problems. And as I said, a lot of these on the AP exam are multiple choice types of problems. And what we really want to pick up first, or what I always pick up first, is where our derivative equals zero, because that's a really good indicator if we were doing a multiple choice question of sum that we could automatically eliminate without having to think. The next point of reference that I look at is, is my differential equation only dependent on x? If it's only dependent on x, then all of my vertical tangent lines would have the same slope. And if it's only dependent on y, which is what we saw here, then all of my horizontal tangent lines would be parallel. And again, we're going to be seeing a lot more of that, but that's it for this lesson.